Well, hello everyone. My name is John Goddard, and I'm here to host Spiritual Lifelines today. We've kind of turned the table, so to speak, because the interviewer has become the interviewee. Now, we all know Father Ron is a wonderful priest and a fantastic pastor, but maybe many of us don't know what a terrific artist he is. And I really mean terrific. So our point today is to give you some sense of how he became able to paint and develop his creative voice in spite of all his other responsibilities. Father Ron? Well, John, thank you so much. My goodness, I, uh, of course I picked John because he's been so supportive of my art in these past few years uh, since he's been in the parish. Um, I Thank you for this. This is really great. What I'd, what I'd like to do for just a moment is talk about um, how we got started here in the parish. Now, unfortunately, right now, of course, our pro we don't have an art program, and I've had to I had to shut it down in January because of space. And then, of course, two months later, we don't have anything uh, in this building. But I'd like to go back seven years uh, when Lisa Lundquist was uh, in the parish here, and she had worked with our novices for ten years. Um, with art and uh, we had a big class that year so she came to me and said can I have space in the parish center and uh, I said yes under one, just one condition and that is can I do it too and she looked at me uh, very puzzled and she goes of course so as we talked about it um, she uh, she brought me to her setup which was upstairs at the time and uh, she said, I want to give you one art lesson. And she said, I want to make sure that I start you in the right place. So she, um, she put a piece of white paper on a wall and she got some black paint, some water and a brush. And she said to me this, she said, I know you are grieving from your last assignment in Portland. And she said, I want to tap into that grief for you to create something new in your life. So she said, would you be willing to tell me uh, a story and describe a person that you miss and that you grieve and that you worked with in Portland? And I said, oh, sure. So I decided I was going to describe Joan, who was my age, who had been sexually abused as a child. She was a janitor. She had tight curly hair, thick glasses. She was very thin. She always looked down. And uh, so Lisa went over to uh, the white piece of paper on the board and she picked up the brush, dipped it in some water and some black paint. And in 30 seconds, Joan appeared on that white paper. And I was like, I just, I was overwhelmed. So she says to me, okay, now I want you to do it. So she goes, describe somebody else. And uh, so I described Steve, who uh, lives in a tent out in the woods in Portland and was received into the Catholic Church at one Easter vigil. And of course, his reception into the church was so very different. He stood in, in the center of the community just soaking wet because you know, it was raining and he lives in a tent. Um, and he's very shy and so he too was abused as a child. And in the, in the parish, he always sat in the last pew um, with his arms over the pew and a baseball cap on. And so I described all of that to Lisa and then she handed me the brush and I dipped it in water and I dipped it in paint and I went over to the white piece of paper and I went like this and there was Steve. And I stood in front of the two of those paintings and just wept, wept. I just cried my eyes out. And Lisa said to me this, she said, look, this is all inside of you. All you have to do is do it. So that was the beginning uh, with
which we started uh, here in the parish. And then she, she grew her classes and she, at one point, uh, in the course of a month, she had 72 students mm -hmm. um, with different classes in a month long, um, during, the, during the month. And, uh, but we, at the beginning, um, you know, there was just a few of us in, in the class, Annie Carter and her sister Sherry and myself, and, and Lisa would literally have to come over and pull on my uh, shirt to get me to stop, you know, because I just, I was so absorbed in it. You know, I nev it never occurred to me that I liked uh, abstract art. I mean, I, I, I always knew, I mean, I knew I did, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that I liked creating, and mm -hmm. I never gave myself permission to do it. I've always been attracted to art, but I've also been more attracted to, attracted to the artist, mm -hmm. to the person who, from the inside out, knows that inspiration and that gift of the spirit. You know, um, at, um, at Notre Dame, when I was there in formation, we, we have just lost a couple of our artists in the last 20 years, and you know, I, 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 I just love them. I, I would go and watch them work, and, but I never gave myself permission to do it. So here in my 60s, I'm just beginning um, to do it. And, uh, and I used to tell Lisa all the time that, you know, I said, I'm too old to worry about color. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to use color, I'm using color. I don't care what color mm -hmm. it is. So all of, the, all of those rules went out the window with me. And because, as I said, life is too short, I'm gonna use the colors mm -hmm. I wanna use. And uh, so, uh, and I'm really drawn, again, I think this is because of my age, um, you know, to the face of Jesus. And um, it's, it's where I wanna put my life and my life energy and hope that someday, I see the real thing, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's kind of my focus. And then we developed, um, we realized that those kinds of images work with the bulletin really well. And so Julie, who was here at the time, um, started creating the bulletin covers. And we realized that the, the contrast of the many colors work really well mm -hmm. with the bulletin. Yeah. So, and that was that was really fun, and I've I've done several um, uh, commissions as well, and I think you know I look as I look back on my life. I remember when I was in college, I was uh, in Rome and Florence um, uh, for a week or so in a summer, and I saw the Michelangelo's. Um, uh, he was in Florence. Those those huge enormous blocks of marble mm -hmm. where things just kind of images and faces and hands just emerge from Shaker. that marble yeah. and it's not finished that's the essence of my work mm -hmm. I want it to be not finished I want the viewer to um, to finish it mm -hmm. you know it's sort of like I've learned that I paint and I preach the same way I hold up words hoping that the hearer will make their own connections, and I think the painting is the same way. I've, uh, that's what I've learned over the course of the years. And uh, so it's been, um, it's been such a gift, and with the art and my writing, um, these are the kinds of things that really ground me um, as a priest today. Um, and, you know, to kind of witness then to the community uh, my own spiritual life, you know. So. Right, right. I have a question for you that I, I, I hope you can help us understand a little bit more. Why do you think at that moment of your life you gave yourself permission? You've been enduring this grief for a long, long time because you're in Portland for several years. Yeah. You probably you had grief before that, but yeah. why at that moment? Yeah. Our viewers might really be encouraged to try something like this that they could. You know, it's really, I, it's really interesting. I really do believe it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Even in Portland, guess what? We had an art program mm -hmm. at the parish. Uh, so homeless people who live out, out in the streets, people who are suffering horrible mental illness, would come in 
and pick up a pencil or a paintbrush or whatever, and I was there, I never did it. I never did it. Um, and I, I really think it was just, at this point in my life, I just said, oh my gosh, I want to do this. Right, right, you know. right. And you call your art abstract, and it is, and it's got so much energy and drama, but it's also profoundly expressive. You must have painted the face of Jesus hundreds of times. Every one of them is unique. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Um, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just, That's a good answer. I don't know. I, I just do it. And uh, I literally walk into a room, I go, I pick up a random color, and just start. Okay. And so whatever that color is, that's what I use, and then I add to that. Um, and I try my best to, I, I try my best to capture some emotion. That's, that's the point of it. I don't want this to be a, a, a photograph. And of course, you are a professional photographer, but it, I understand. This is a, this is a very different reality. Yeah. I don't want a photograph. I want something that's going to evoke motion, emotion and, um, and some kind of reality that life isn't finished yet um, and that the divine is in it. Um, so that's kind of, um, you know, when I was first ordained, I took a drawing course um, in downtown South Bend at an art center, but I never continued it. You know, in graduate school, I took a pottery course for one semester, but I never continued it. Yeah. And um, so I'm hoping for the rest of my life I can use this uh, for the good of people trying to get closer to the power of God. And I know that sometimes it's more than, that the art is more than people can handle, mm -hmm. um, but that's the whole point. We, we come to it to to receive something that is beyond our experience and and to encounter that is is a part of our lives our lives of faith perfect yeah. very powerful so that's all we have time for today but there's more next week we're going to talk about a commission father um, ron has received from liturgical press for a very important book that we published uh, in several months so have a great week. May the faith, may the peace and justice and uh, mercy of God be with you and your family.